आई आनंद वर्धन अ फैकल्टी एट स्कूल ऑफ हेरिटेज वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल द लर्नर्स एंड लिसनर्स फ्रेंड्स आई विल डिस्कस टुडे द हिस्ट्री एंड सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ साउथ इंडियन सिटीज इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड ऑलरेडी द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ नॉर्थ इंडियन सिटीज ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द एब सेड लेक्चर इज टू अंडरस्टैंड द आर्कोलॉजिकल हिस्ट्री ऑफ एंशियंट साउथ इंडियन सिटीज देर आर्किटेक्चरल वैल्यू कल्चरल हेरिटेजेज एंड इम्पॉर्टेंस फॉर नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल टूरिस्ट I mean that how these places of historical significance attract a great number of tourists. In previous lecture, we discussed comprehensively early cities of South India. In this discussion, we will focus on historical cities, including important religious towns and places of pilgrimage. you are acquainted with the fact that south india remained under hindu kings for a long time therefore temple towns were well protected and were restored by successive hindu dynasties this is the primary reason a tourist may find a great number of living temples in far south contrary to the fact that towns of ancient era belonging to northern india mainly yielded archaeological relics we have therefore magnificent towns in entire south like mahabalipuram kumbhakonam thanjavur kanchipuram madurai halebid hampi etc now we will discuss a few important cities known for their precious heritage the fourth site that we are taking is an important buddhist site named amravati it is on the right bank of river krishna it occupies a preeminent position in the history of indian art it is situated about 35 kilometers to the north of the town of guntur which is the head quarters of the district of the same name in andhra pradesh besides being the nearest railway station government transport buses can be found here on regular basis from guntur to amravati moreover during rainy season and winter amravati can be reached by from vijayawada itself we have at this place excavated stupa site that are of immense archaeological significance here we have an archaeological museum also that reveals the archaeological history of the place the place is famous also as a pilgrim center on the account of the location of the amareshwara temple which gives the present name to the locality its neighboring village dhani kot was the actual site of the ancient dhanya katak the capital of the later satvahanas visitors who intend to have an overnight halt at the town may reserve accommodation by prior application in the rest houses maintained by district public relation officer guntur so for tourists this is a very important place to discover a lot of archaeological relics and in this context we will see how discovery and excavation of this interesting place had taken place amravati is locally known as deepal dima it was surveyed by colonel colin mckenzy as early as 1797 a year earlier a local landlord had changed his residence from chintapalli to amravati and led the foundation of the modern township around the amreshwara temple many people at his invitation settled in this area and the building activities that started there after resulted into a disaster as local people carried away a lot of building material from the historical mound itself and this is one of the reason that a great part of this historic place was destroyed 
Mackenzie revisited the place in 1818 with a hand of assistance for preparing detailed drawing of the site and the monuments of this place. A few sculptured pieces were also recovered by him. After Mackenzie's discovery of the Mahachaitya site, several European officers took interest in collecting sculptures from Amravati. It was another, you can say, endeavor of recovering object that resulted into a disaster. Robert Sewell and James Burgess also visited the site and they collected very good number of sculptures from the site of the Mahachaitya that was made in late Satvahana period and thereafter. As a matter of fact, the recent operation during the year 1958-59 under R. Subramaniam and K. Krishnamurti of the Archaeological Survey of India brought to view a large number of inscribed architectural pieces, sculptured fragments, reliquaries and other minor antiquities including sculptures and relief scribable to early medieval times. Some more inscribed and sculptured slabs were exposed in an excavation carried out by I.K. Sarma in 1973 and 74. Dhanikatak, the fortified capital of the Satvahana was also excavated during the year 1962 to 65. M. Venkat Ramanna and K. Raghavachari excavated the place and it revealed five period of occupation of the site. On the basis of radiocarbon dates, one may easily date beginning of settlement there to 5th century BC. A sculptures from Mahachaitya site are distributed over several museums of India and bulk of these sculptures can be seen in Government Museum Chennai. We can also find sculptures of Amravati in British Museum London itself. In addition, there are a few antiquities from the nearby places which have been preserved in local archaeological museums. Sravan Vale Gola is another important site which is very significant for tourists. It is in Chan Rai Patan Taluk of Hassan district of Karnataka, Sravan Velgola is a small town of 5000 population with an area of less than 2 square kilometer. Although sandwiched between two rocky hills, the smaller one known as Chandragiri or Chikkabetta and the larger one as Vindhagiri or Indragiri, it is known for scenic beauty and this place is undoubtedly has a beautiful panorama around it. The town derives its name from, name from the words Sramana in Sanskrit meaning ascetic and Belgola, Belakola in Kannada meaning white tank corresponding to Dhavala Sarovar in Sanskrit. The importance of Sravan Bel Gola lies in its being one of the holiest Jain pilgrimage centers where the world's tallest statue carved out of a single rock stand as the summit of 143.2 meter in it is 143.2 meter in height. Sravan Bel Gola can boast of having 37 temples of varying sizes and 525 inscriptions in three different languages and scripts throwing light on the history of the place from 3rd century BC to 18th century AD. Apart from monuments on the hills which range in date from 8th to 16th century, there is a Jain monastery in the town known for its 17th 
18th century wall painting besides two temples, one dedicated to Chandranath and the other to Parshwanath, we have magnificent images all around the existing temple. And this is a very interesting and abiding tourist place in Karnataka, especially for followers of the Jain religion. We have taken another important urban center from South India. The name of the place is Madurai. Friends, Madurai is the ancient home of Tamil culture. It is the seat of the famous temple dedicated to Minakshi and Sundareshwar, Lord Shiva, a charming city enriched by the waters of the sacred Vaigai. It is the greatest attraction for every tourist who visit the South India. This temple was made in Pandyan period perceptually by a Pandyan princess who married Lord Shiva. The site of the majestic towers, a cluster of small and large temples, Vimanas, make this place very, very attractive as it is customary to worship first Devi Minakshi and then Lord Sundareshwar. People enter the temple through the Astha Sakti Mandapam on the eastern street. Astha Sakti Mandapam over the entrance of the Astha Sakti Mandapam is found in the sculptural representation of the wedding Minakshi. The images of Ganesh Subramaniam are seen on either side. The mandapam is also called after the figure of eight Sakti is represented on the pillars on the two sides. On the walls are seen painting and sculptured figures depicting scenes from Thiru Thiru Vilayadal Puranam. The figures of the four great Saivite saints adorn the mandapam of the eastern end. Minakshi Nayakan Mandapam is another magnificent piece of architecture. It has five aisles separated by six rows of stone pillars on which are carved yalis, I mean griffins, and different kinds of attractive motifs, floral designs and figures. Moodali Pillai Mandapam a splendid Chitra Gopuram invites us to the Mudali Pillai Mandapam, also known as Dark Mandapam. Of the numerous carving here, the figure of Bhikshadanar, of the infatuated wife of the Rishis of Tharu, Gavana and Mohini are the most outstanding images of this particular mandapam. We have golden lotus tank. We pass from the dark mandapam to the beautiful sacred Potra Marrai Kulam, golden lotus tank. According to tradition, Indra bathed in the tank in the order to purify himself of his sin and worship Lord Shiva with golden lotus flower. On the pillars of the northern corridor are figures of 24 poets of the third Tamil Sangam, figures of Dhananjan, the merchant who discovered the main shrine in the forest of Kadambavanam and of the Kulsekhara Pandyan who built the temple and the city are also seen on two pillars of this corridor. On the walls of the northern and eastern corridors are numerous paintings depicting scenes from Thiru Vilayadal Puranam. From the eastern corridor, we can see the golden domes over the sanctum sanctorum of Minakshi Sundareshwar Temple. We have another significant city in South India. This city is known as Mahabalipuram. It is also called Mamallapuram. It is a port city with alluring monuments of the Pallava period. 
देर आर मंडपाज रथाज एंड स्ट्रक्चरल टेम्पल्स ऑल ओवर द टाउन मंडपाज आर रॉक कट टेम्पल्स हिवेन आउट इन हिलॉक्स रथाज आर मोनोलिथिक श्राइंस इट इज नोन एज द सिटी ऑफ फाइव पैगोडाज बिकॉज वी हैव फाइव मोनोलिथिक टेम्पल्स नेम्ड आफ्टर द हीरोज ऑफ महाभारत द टाउन इज नोन फॉर इट्स सोर टेम्पल्स ऑल्सो These temples have a pyram pyramidal superstructure called Vimana. A called a Mang Mandapas Trimurti cave is very famous. Near it, on a rock surface, the scene from Sanskrit epic Kirata Arjunam called Penance of Arjuna is depicted in a very lively manner. The biggest monolithic temple is the Yudhisthira Rath. This is the first example of a double storied shrine. This is a world heritage site where exist workshops of masons who do traditional carving work. Mahabalipuram is known for living tradition of craftsmanship. The workshop of masons are very significant for tourists. because you can see here the ancient technology of rock carving and making different images in south india there are many beautiful temple towns among them there is a place named tanjore it was the capital of the imperial cholas it is famous all over the world for brihadeswara temple also called raj rajeshwara kovil it has the highest superstructure in entire south india it is made within a fortified area the temple complex is considered as the museum of architecture by art historians and archaeologists apart from chola temples there are temples of vijayanagar and nayak period made within the fortified complex of chola temple called brihadeswar temple tanjore is also a world heritage site near this city there is another temple town called kumbhakonam it has a large sacred pond famous for mahamakam festival this town has famous ramar swami temple that is dedicated to lord rama close to this city tanjore there is a place known as swami mallai it is very famous for making bronze images another sacred town of south india which is widely known for silk production is kanchipuram kanchipuram is a magnificent town adorned with pallav chol and vijayanagar architecture the kailash nath temple is the best sign of the pallava period we have many other shrines situated in the city like varadaraj perumal and vaikunth perumal we have also ekambareshwara temple and kanchipuram shankar math supposed to be established by adi shankara chare i mean the first shankara chare the city has been famous as a trading and production center of silk it was the most famous industrial town of ancient south india right from the period called sangam age to pallav period from pallav period to chol period and from chol period to vijayanagar and nayak period and the tradition has endured up to our age among the significant south indian temple town the kanchipuram kanchipuram as a city is of great significance we have done a specific study of uh, varadaraja swami temple that controlled several villages maintained gardens also helped safers and peasants 
in their traditional work by giving them loan. This is the true story of Brideshwar temple Tanjore also that has more than 900 temple functionaries which worked for temple. This temple also gave donation to pigeons and shepherd and in that way temples played very important role in the development of the society. You will be surprised to know that many of the temples in South India played significant role in development of agriculture, development of canals, development of roads, development of towns. They imparted education, they also imparted justice to the people. Temples also functioned as banks and they gave loan to the common people. It is also remarkable that the functions of temples have been beautifully inscribed on their walls. So friends, now it is now time to sum up this lecture. In this lecture on historic towns of South India, we have discussed about a very good number of important religious places which were also great trading centers. One thing you must realize that a place earns religious significance once it emerges as an industrial town. It happened with Madurai, it also happened with Kanchipuram. The historic towns of South India were trading centers as well as places of pilgrimage for all of us. For example, both Madura and Kanchipuram have been famous for cotton and silk products. All the towns reveals to us successive development of architecture in different period. We have elaborately discussed that how right from Pallava period to Vijayanagar period at place like Tanjaur and Kanchipuram great temples were erected. The South Indian temple towns are places of, for eminent, for, of eminent importance for the tourist as they consist of magnificent living temples, forts and palaces of Dravidian style. Apart from that for tourists, they offer many traditional items. These items are excellent example of ancient Indian craftsmanship and a continuing tradition of craftsmanship. We can say these temple towns have just not preserved the great heritage of India but also the tradition of its art, craft, dance, drama and music. This is the region apart from archaeological remains, they are significant in terms of intangible heritages also. Thank you, thank you very much.